When Trent Reedy headed to Afghanistan as a National Guard combat engineer, he had no idea how it would change his life or who he would meet. He admits time spent with the people changed him forever. One of those was an English teacher, an Afghani Jawad Arash. Now together the two wrote a novel, Enduring Freedom, about the unlikely friendship between an Afghan teen and a U.S. soldier. We can't talk with him or show you a picture of the co-author, Jawad, because he's in hiding right now with his family in Afghanistan. Trent Reedy shares more. The story of our meeting is uh, probably one of history's worst beginnings of a friendship, certainly for myself. The, the most awkward, worst beginning of one of my uh, uh, longest and most endearing uh, and enduring uh, friendships. Uh, I, in 2004, I was serving with the Army National Guard in the city of Farah in western Afghanistan. I was assigned to guard duty. Uh, in this house we were renting in the middle of town while our base was being constructed outside the city. And so I had overwatch on the street in front of our uh, compound. And a uh, teenage uh, boy approached and spoke English and was greeting me and wanted to talk to me. And I was very surprised that he spoke English, but I was fresh out of a whole bunch of army training, uh, which reminded us, uh, don't be complacent and be on the lookout for suicide bombers. So when he stepped close to the wall uh, where I had my position, he wanted to stand in the shade. I, I, um, I ordered him to back up and to, to get away from my wall. And he protested, it's very hot. He wanted to be in the shade. Uh, and I, I told him to back up again. So I'm very embarrassed about that. Uh, Jawad and I laugh about it now. Um, but uh, fortunately, he, he didn't give up on me and kept coming back to practice his English. Uh, that was what he wanted to do, uh, work on improving his English. And uh, we kept meeting throughout uh, my deployment and then uh, communicated via email and social media after I returned to America. I love I love that you said he didn't give up on you. And first of all, I don't think you should give yourself too much of a hard time. There's a lot of stress going on there. I can only imagine, but you persevered, you built this beautiful friendship, and now you've decided to write a book together. How did that come about? Jawad and I were kind of reminiscing about how we first met. And I asked about when he uh, first encountered uh, the presence of Americans uh, in his, uh, where he lived in Afghanistan. Uh, and we kept talking about it, and pretty soon we were aware that we had a story um, that, uh, especially with the approach of the 20th anniversary of 9-11 and the beginning of the war in Afghanistan, uh, that uh, this would be a good story to, to share, uh, especially with young people who were born after that, don't have a memory of those events. So, um, so yeah, we went to work on this book. It was a challenge, writing from opposite sides of the planet. That's a, almost a 12-hour time difference. So one of us would be writing and working while the other was asleep. And then we would have a brief conference. Uh, in Afghanistan, I know there's a lot going on there. We all see the pictures coming um, from the news. And it's hard for us to imagine this world so far away that so few of us have visited. Um, and so much has changed now since the withdrawal. I understand Jawad Arash is now in hiding. Uh, what is the message he tried to convey in the book with his work in teaching English in the country and, and trying to create this different understanding. First, they seize control of education and they want to tell people uh, what to think and what they can say and how they can express ideas. And so Jawad Arash is very passionate as an educator uh, teaching in, uh, in a university in Afghanistan, but also one of the themes that he was adamant be very prominent in enduring freedom is the importance of education. That's why his Afghan character Bahir uh, discovers uh, how critically important education is and the and the freedom of thought. That is really what we're up against now. What we're always up against and is um, uh, even now when he's in hiding, Jawad Arash has this hope. I don't know how he he's, he's tougher than me. I don't know where he gets this strength, but he, he still holds out hope for resistance among you know, free-thinking people who, uh, who, who resist the, 
Taliban's cruelty and uh, totalitarian control. So it's uh, it's very difficult, and and still somehow Jawad uh, remains hopeful. He encourages me. He says, "Hey, don't give up, Trent. Uh, things are going to get better. Somehow, I know that I'll get out of here. I'll get my family out of here, and someday we'll we'll have a coffee in America." How do you hope your work and Jawad's work and perspective changes the perspective on the war in Afghanistan? Uh, when I first arrived in Afghanistan, I had a lot of, and I'm, um, I'm deeply ashamed of this, uh, so I hope that uh, viewers will um, be patient with me while I try to explain this. Um, if, you, if, we can, if we can accept that war uh, can change a person, I, I beg you to understand that it changed me profoundly. But when I first arrived in Afghanistan, I had a lot of ideas about which I'm not proud. And this is something that comes out in Enduring Freedom. I didn't want to hide this from my young readers. Um, I was very angry about 9-11. It was far, far closer to us in 2004 than it is uh, 20 years later uh, this year. Uh, and I was, uh, I was afraid. I was angry that I had to leave my home and my family. And I made this naive mistake uh, uh, of blaming all the Afghans, blaming, uh, probably if I'm going to be really honest, uh, you know, blaming a lot of the Muslims. This was, a, and it sometimes still is, a, unfortunately, too popular event an attitude uh, among many Americans. What happened is I, I got out there among the Afghan people, right? Uh, and uh, I, I couldn't keep the anger up. I see these little kids and they were so nice and they were so excited to see us. And, and not just the kids, the adults too. Uh, the Afghans were so wonderful to us, helped save my life many times. I couldn't stay angry. And I had to admit that, oh, you know, that little kid and, oh, and his father, his parents, uh, they're not responsible for that. And so um, that is when I really started to take our mission of reconstruction to heart, right? It was going to be um, some other soldier's responsibility to go find the Taliban and hunt them down. My job was to protect those soldiers who were trying to help the Afghans rebuild after devastating war. And people don't get that. People think this was only a seek and destroy mission. It was so much more than that. We brought hope. I, we, I, was, I saw hundreds of Afghan girls going to school where before and now they were, they were not allowed to go to school by the Taliban. Roads were repaired and cell phone towers went up and we provided uh, school supplies for these young Afghan uh, students on election day in October of 2004. It was a, it was a mission that brought profound hope and a, and a, and a, and a chance to to make something better. That, that's, you asked what I would like readers to take away from Enduring Freedom, and that's part of it, to understand that once upon a time, there was a lot of hope in Afghanistan. This mission was working. It, it allowed uh, young Afghan, uh, both uh, boys and girls, men and women, to uh, aspire to uh, their own best destinies in ways that they hadn't been allowed for 20 years or more. And it's just, it's just, it's so it burns and so agonizing to see all of that progress and all of that hope thrown away. I really appreciate Trent's honesty about how he changed while he was serving in Afghanistan. And as of now, Jawad is in hiding, being hunted by the Taliban because of what he does as an educator. Trent continues to work to find a way to get Jawad and his family out, and we'll try to keep you updated.